Living on earth is a privilege. Believe it when I tell you that everyone who wants to incarnate in a body does not get to. The many thresholds that you must cross in order to participate in the society as it stands are phenomenal. And beyond that point, many of the beings, many of the human beings who get to live in a human body are not actually permitted to feel anything close to a full range of human feeling. The privilege of feeling, of experiencing, of breathing and loving, vibrating in deep relationship with this life of the body that you know and its many ways of interacting with this world is a deep privilege. And you earn an increasing range of the vibrancy that is possible in this world based in how you invest your energy. It is a prerequisite to trust that the most painful and devastating forces that you know of in this world have a greater role. You must trust it before you understand it in many circumstances. For this to make full sense, you must eventually come to grips with a deeper range of the actual purpose of being human. On the simplest of levels, incarnating on a planet is not actually done for its own sake. Much of existence is experienced outside of relationship to a planetary body. A planet is appropriately titled. It is a plan et. It is actually a much smaller part of the greater experience of being alive. And when I say alive, I want you to normalize an understanding that life is something that exists far beyond the experience of a carbon-based breathing, eating entity. It may be more convenient for you to say living consciously. Consciousness itself has many ways to experience existence. And many of those ways do not involve being on planet. By many measures, the eternal existence that is normal to you is heaven. Why would one leave such an experience? It isn't as callous as boredom. It has much more to do with physics. Over time, beings make choices that have karmic repercussions. The many layers of existence are all functionally related to each other. Within existence, in any particular form, you have a varied range of responses to the relations, to the opportunities, to the movement that you share with other beings. Over time, you accrue cosmic karma, dense, unwanted, spiritual compost. And in the eternal experience, it is not acceptable to simply leave such energies. When you are moving between planetary and solar bodies, you are indelibly associated with everything that you create. And much of what you create accrues density. As you become more dense, your ability to move is restricted. This restriction increasingly limits your ability to dance, to sing, to make love with other beings. And as such, you essentially visit planetary bodies as a rather remarkable and complex version of potty training. You bring what you do not need to a place where it is needed. Planetary bodies are dense, the denser energy gets, the more it creates matter, the more things matter. When you bring dense energy to a planetary body, the first priority, the first reason is to get rid of it. And because this is the first and most essential priority that many beings visit a planetary body, many beings 
accept a rather difficult existence on a planet. They suffer. They suffer much more than it makes sense to suffer from the perspective of a life that is centered on the planet. However, the dramatic and revolutionary understanding that you are perhaps prepared to embrace is that most beings are not actually here. What essentially happens is you live out your experience by remote control. You bring a dense range of energy to a planet and you are partly responsible for digesting it, for helping to transform it and leave it. The less you are willing to invest in this process, the more you suffer. However, when your consciousness is not centered around the values of feeling that are essential to being human, accepting a negative version of being human is not as terrifying. And indeed, if a being such as this never transcends, never invests more deeply, never cherishes the air in the experience of the sunlight, then they come, they suffer, and they leave. This is the simplest explanation for why suffering exists. And it continues to occur until a much more radical transformation is experienced. Because it is necessary for you to embrace that this grand version of composting occurs in waves. Large numbers of beings are gathered to compost together. And as a result, a wide variety of experiences channeled into a shared experience. And you embrace the same tune. By the end of this extraordinary cycle, you share something indelible akin to a graduation. You become something akin, a family of sorts in this, that you carry with you and it matters for a long time. Imagine that you all learn to love the same song and can come back to it and share it over the course of many future incarnations in different locations. Imagine that you all share a common mission and that you will leave this planet in a shared wave of joy. This is an indelible part of existence. When beings spend remarkable lengths of time traveling between solar and planetary bodies, and for multiple reasons avoid incarnating for various lengths, we have a vast diversity of experience. The time is broken up by an incarnation. When you're floating in space, there is no night and day. A year means much less because you are not primarily associated with a planet that circles the sun. As such, what breaks up your experience except choosing to be associated with a planetary body? In order to fully embrace what is happening to you now in this human experience, you must put yourself in the perspective of a being that chooses to incarnate. And when you choose to incarnate, you have very different priorities than you experience from within the incarnation. You must recognize that part of your soul that makes those choices with very different priorities in heart. The surrender of yourself into a heart is experienced as an extraordinary dissolution. You let go of multiple ranges of what you know yourself to be and your consciousness retracts into a point. Then you are reborn with new priorities. However, those priorities are shaped by the karma that you brought to this experience. In order for this to work while many beings remain sane, it is necessary to create stories that everyone shares. These stories function first and foremost to change your rhythm. They tune you 
Many different beings of many different forms are brought together. They incarnate in different patterns within different cultures. These choices are relevant and deeply meaningful. The reason you are Chinese or American or Aboriginal are in large part shaped by your experience before you came here. And indeed, the reason some beings stay entirely in a chain of incarnation within one culture and other beings incarnate within several cultures have everything to do with your level of investment in this experience. In order to access these understandings, you must be willing to dissolve your sense of self and extend it, extend what you know of as you beyond the limitations of everything you have known. And this process is essentially psychotic. Every feeling, every thought, every known foundation of living becomes questionable. Things that have been stable all your life fade and move. It's as if the canvas starts to ripple and change color. What you have known of as normal can become, if not irrelevant, completely unstable. And the insanity of this experience allows you to open to a much broader truth. In fact, it is often a fundamental and essential quality of awakening that you lose your ability to trust everything you've known. And as a result, you gradually or quickly Learn to stop trying to trust foundations that are not stable. Learn to stop trying to paint paintings on a canvas that moves and changes color. And as you surrender your desire, as you surrender the momentum of your attempt to choose to create your life in certain ways, the only thing that becomes trustworthy is the truth. You have been living a lie. This lie has existed while you slept. Your true soul has been sleeping and in the process, a very small part of yourself has been focused enough on this particular conscious experience of being human that you've lived as you have lived. And the more you choose to awaken to recognize the depth of the meaning of these experiences, the more you get to choose to be. You get the fringe benefits of experiencing everything more vibrantly. Each rich cup that you drink can have orders of magnitude, more depth of experience. Each intimacy that you share, each walk in the woods gains color and form and depth and vibrancy and love. The only way to do this is to fully allow your consciousness to expand beyond the boundaries of living on earth. As you let go of the lie, you awaken as you release all investment in maintaining false premises, false boundaries to your experience. You reveal to yourself a truth that was true before you incarnated. This is the time of revelations. It is foretold because it is written in the fabric of the way this story was created. It is a rhythm of music. It is a rhythm of vibration that has no capacity to change itself. And to the extent you struggle against the boundaries of these expectations, you will lose. So the choice is yours. Will you set the tone within your heart to embrace the truth of this, to cease your struggle with things you cannot change, and thus open your perspective to the awareness of what truly is up to you to do, to live, to feel, and to recognize within this lifetime.